Tonight we are here to discuss a criminal investigation into an officer. We ask that you keep all of your questions pertaining to this press conference. At this time, we're going to have Chief Brady come up and make his statement. Good evening. We're here today to discuss the criminal investigation into Officer Israel Gear Johnson of the Fayetteville Police Department. On October 6, 2023, the Fayetteville Police Department received a crime stopper tip identifying a police officer, Israel Gear Johnson, as being involved in illegal narcotic activity. This tip allowed us as a department to initiate a criminal investigation into those allegations. Our Narcotics by Suppression Unit began immediately to investigate Gear Johnson as a follow-up to the tip. Through the investigation, it was determined that Gear Johnson had committed the following crimes. Two counts of willfully failing to discharge his duties, one count of common law obstruction of justice, a charge of conspiracy, and a charge for maintaining a dwelling for keeping controlled substances. Based on these findings, I made contact with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, who will also be reviewing the case to see if any additional federal charges would be appropriate. Some background on Officer Johnson. Gear Johnson was hired by the Fable Police Department in June of 2021 to attend the Fable Police Department's Academy. He was sworn in as a patrol officer in June of 2022. He violated his oath of office as a police officer by conspiring with other individuals who were involved in criminal activity throughout our city. It is important that the Fable Police Department maintains the highest standards for our residents and this arrest is an example of how we continue to maintain that promise to them. One of my goals as the Chief of Police is to release all information I have available to the public as long as it doesn't hinder any ongoing investigation. I hope that you take the information that I'm giving tonight as an opportunity for the police department to hold itself accountable for the shortcomings of our own officers. I hope you take this press conference and what happened today as an act of transparency, of us trying to be transparent to the media, to our community, as we hold ourselves accountable. I'll take questions at this time. Has the officer been arrested at this point? Has he been processed, that kind of thing, or just charges being brought? Can you kind of talk about that at all? So he has been charged. He has been taken before a magistrate. He has received a $100,000 secure bond. He is currently at the Cumberland County Jail. Chief, I can hear your voice. Just, do you expect more of your, your officers? I don't think that this incident is reflective of the things that I've tried to accomplish over the first eight or nine months of me being the police chief. But I hope this does send a message, both internally to the officers and employees of the Fayetteville Police Department and externally to the community, that I'm a chief of accountability. I do try to be transparent both externally and internally whenever I have that opportunity. I could have taken a lot more time and investigated this a lot more thoroughly, but I think that the gravity of, of, of the situation, the gravity of the, of, the, of the allegations required some immediacy in my actions. And like I said, I have called upon the FBI to conduct follow-up investigations to see if additional charges will be warranted or, or justified in this case. But I took immediate action to resolve the issue that was brought before, brought to my attention. Are you aware of uh, any history of delinquent behavior at this time? Sure. Sure. Well, again, I, and, and Monique, I, I, I'm going to be as transparent as I can without hindering the current ongoing investigation. I think that, that you know, tipping our hat to all the things that we have or we truly try to investigate and conduct follow-up on. Remember, I received this allegation and complaint Friday evening. You know, and it's based on that hasty investigation that, that, yes, we were able to confirm there were truths to those allegations 
and we've handled those as swiftly as we could, but there is a lot of follow-up that, that needs to be done in order before I can answer some of those questions. Chief, um, so what the charges you, you stated, so was he buying drugs or was he intent to sell them? What, what can you tell us what he was trying to do? I think the best that I can do is reiterate some of the charges that he was actually charged with. He's conspiring. There's a conspiracy charge in there. That means that, that there was some collaboration, cooperation with a person who was committing criminal offenses. He has been charged with maintaining dwelling for keeping controlled substances. That means that potentially in his house there were drugs at some point or time or another. And then the willful, uh, not, excuse me, let me get, make sure that I word it correctly. Uh, Willfully fell into discharge his duties. I can say this, there was information that Officer Gear Johnson had that he failed to act upon, which allowed criminals to go unapprehended and unidentified. I think that's to the, the best extent I can explain those charges at this time. Chief, do, do you have a mugshot that you can share with us, number one? Number two, what's the message to the citizens of Fayetteville? So no, uh, a lot of things were ha have been happening simultaneously today. Uh, I don't currently have a mugshot available to release. Uh, we will see about any, any updates that come in the near future, to see if those are, we're able to include those within those updates. What was your second question? What's the message to the citizens? I think the message is, I've already stated that, is that we are doing our best to hold ourselves accountable internally and externally to our community. And that there's been questions about transparency. I'm being as transparent as I can be with everybody involved. You know, we didn't hold on to any of this information. We didn't have some long, drawn-out investigation. And as soon as we identified it as a criminal act, we acted upon that. Talk to us about what's the, the Crime Stoppers have an availability to have those tips come in like this one here. So if you follow us on our Facebook page, I, I think you will see on a regular basis the results of Crime Stopper tips on our ability to enforce the law and identify violators of the law in the city of Fayetteville. Crime Stoppers provides a platform for people who are, you know, not ready or, or, or unable to identify who they are and, uh, and, and point out and be an accuser in open public, a platform where they can give the police information that we can follow up on and potentially resolve issues within our community. So I think that, that uh, you know, a great amount of credit goes out to the Crime Stoppers program. You know, outside of Community Watch is probably one of the longest running programs that the City of Fayetteville Police Department participates with our outside partners with. So enough can't be said about Crime Stoppers and what it did for us in this investigation. Um, Chief Brandon, do you have any reason to believe anyone else from FPD is involved in this active investigation? So I, at this point in time, no. Okay, uh, the investigation that we have so far, we, we have acted upon anything that was identified as criminal activity at this point. Again, this is an ongoing investigation. There's very, you know, there's limited information I can give because we are still looking into other things. I can tell you this, I've addressed the employees of the Fayetteville Police Department just prior to coming out here tonight. Again, I reiterated my expectations of accountability internally within our department to ourselves, to our chain of command, and to the community. So I'm, I'm confident that if any other charges stem of any other Fayetteville police officers, that we'll probably have another press conference just as this, and those names will be brought to light as well. What's the age of the officer? Uh, 23. Yes, tw uh, tw uh, 23 years old. Chief. I know you have many officers. Uh, could you tell us what kind of officer was Israel up till 
you know, last Friday. So I, I, I would say this, that is one of the things I'll refrain from making comment on uh, because, you know, there's a lot to be discovered, there's a lot to be questions to be asked, there's still interviews and things to be had, but, but uh, I don't think that this is the time for me to, 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 to go in discussions on what kind of officer or what potential background he has. And, and, and be mindful that, that this is, I'm uh, speaking tonight about the criminal investigation. Naturally, based on this criminal investigation, there will be a parallel internal investigation that goes along with that. So uh, th those two will be going on simultaneously as we move forward from today. You said earlier, sir, that you don't feel that this incident is reflective of the moral standing, the integrity uh, of which, you know, so many of the other, other officers really carry it within the department and you're going to be looking at ways of having internal accountability. Do you want to speak more towards what that process might look like? Will there be department-wide conversations about this kind of conduct and what's not tolerated and what you do expect of your officers? So I'll tell you this. Uh, as I began this investigation, I had to call upon other favorable police officers to get done what was got, to accomplish the things that were accomplished in a matter of about 72 hours. And I sat in a room with them, and I told them what we were getting ready to do. And not a person opted out of doing what I asked them to do over the past three days. So I, I think that shows that, 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 that the actions of Officer Gear Johnson, he's not just accountable to the community, he's not just accountable to me as Chief of Police, but his fellow detectives who worked with him for the past year and a half his fellow officers who worked with him for the past year and a half, who knew him, they understood the gravity of what I asked them to do, and no one hesitated when it came time to do those things, to conduct that investigation. So I think that speaks to the character of, of the vast majority of the police officers and detectives that work with us or work for the city on a daily basis. But, like I said, I did address the entire department through a letter. Uh, we'll see what we can do about making that available. It's, it's public. We'll provide that to you, to you guys. And in that letter, I just stress the importance of accountability. To have character that's unsullied. And how we should not be the person on the front page of the news tomorrow. but to set the moral standard for our profession. Unknown caller. Is that it? All right, thank you.